Joining me now is someone who knows Trump world well and has spoken recently with both President Trump and with Michael Cohen, the former White House Communications Director, Anthony Scaramucci, who joins us from Israel. Uh, Anthony, thanks so much for joining us. We, we appreciate it. I want to start with Michael Cohen. You said in April that Cohen was a, quote, 3 a.m. break the glass phone call and that, quote, if I had a problem, someone broke into the house or drunk driving, he would be there in a minute, unquote. Uh, now the president's lawyer, Rudy Giuliani, is out there calling Michael Cohen a liar. Do you think Michael Cohen is a liar? Well, listen, there's certainly been a, a breach in the relationship. And so w when I said that, uh, I meant that because I, you know, I'd known Michael for, for 10 years, known the president for a very long time. Uh, and my, my guess was is that they were very loyal to each other. Uh, when your house gets raided uh, and your apartment and hotel room gets raided and you get jarred by the FBI, uh, maybe that has changed now. Um, the, the leaking of the tape, and I listened, I listened to the tape, I think what the president's trying to make the point and uh, Mayor Giuliani's making the point that it seems like the tape was cut off, that there was more dialogue going there. And I think maybe the president thinks that it was favorable dialogue related to him. But, Look, at the end of the day, uh, you know, you're, you're in the biggest aquarium in the world. The White House is literally like a fishbowl, and everybody's microanalyzing every single thing that's happened to you in your life, which is one of the main reasons why people, Jake, don't run for office, because they don't like every single thing that they've done in their lives, sure. uh, you know, put on State of the Union. So, so here we are now. Uh, my, my guess is, is that this is a rift that will continue. I'm not exactly sure what the criminality is here. You know, to me, it doesn't look like it's criminal when I step back and look at it and try to look at it objectively. Mm -hmm. And I think the president's probably very frustrated because he's got a, uh, a great economic plan going. He's got uh, great things going on, whether it's in North Korea or the potentiality for a deal with the EU now. Uh, and so this is one of those sidetracking things that I think it has to be very frustrating. I, I can certainly understand that. You told CNN earlier this month you thought Michael Cohen would remain loyal to the president. That was after, of course, uh, the raid on his office and his home and his hotel room. What do you think happened to change uh, Michael Cohen's calculus? Well, you know, what I, also, what I also did say, though, is that the isolation strategy uh, of Michael Cohen, I've said that a couple of times publicly, is probably not the best strategy either. Now, I'm not on the president's legal team, so I don't know what they're legally allowed to do and, and not allowed to do. Uh, and I'm not exactly sure what Michael's being targeted for. Uh, the president's indicating in a tweet uh, yesterday that it might be related to the medallions and the taxicab licenses that uh, Michael had. So uh, to me, uh, it's, it's not clear to me what is absolutely going on. Uh, I think in, Michael would probably say that he didn't leak the last piece related to the Russian meeting. So I'm not really exactly sure where that came from. Uh, but I don't like the crossfire. You know, when you, you and I uh, have friends go back a long time and you see friends get in a disagreement, uh, you say to yourself, geez, I wish these guys could put down their arms, uh, recognize the longevity of their relationship, uh, and stop the, uh, the backbiting and the infighting. And, and, sure. and, and lastly, uh, doing it on national TV, you know, so my, my message to Michael, and I, and I frankly said this, it's not, it's not the appropriate venue to be doing this. So let's see if we can uh, calm things down. Uh, the president's obviously uh, uh, doing a great job as president. These things happened uh, before he was president. Yeah. And, uh, you know, listen, it's a, it's a complicated world we live in, Jake. What I'm hoping is the Trump agenda uh, uh, on the scales of all these things, the Trump agenda and all the good things that are happening in the economy mm -hmm. will outweigh all of this uh, sort of stuff that's going on right now. But Anthony, as somebody who knows both of them, you have Michael Cohen, according to sources, claiming that President Trump knew ahead of time about that Trump Tower meeting with Russians. You have President Trump denying it repeatedly, publicly. Who do you believe? It's a good question. I mean, listen, I, 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 it's not clear to me Michael leaked that. And so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stay on the side of the president here. Um, I'm going to take the president at his word that he didn't know. Uh, I was in the campaign during that period of time. Uh, it was a major flurry of activity. You have to go back, uh, Jake, back to June of 2016, uh, where one of the things that the campaign was worried about, and this is something Paul Manafort, frankly, was working on, is to make sure that the president's electoral success state by state was going to be matched at the convention floor, 
uh, where we were counting delegates and we wanted to make sure there wasn't some kind of insurrection. Mm -hmm. And so there was a massive amount of activity around that, uh, very, very little activity away from that. And so, uh, and you also have to remember, we were understaffed on that campaign. Uh, we were underfunded relative to Secretary Clinton's campaign as well. And so, so to me, uh, it's very possible, and I take it, I take the president at his word sure. that he did not know about the meeting. But knowing what you know about President Trump and how he runs things, do you, you really find it credible that Donald Trump Jr., Jared Kushner, Paul Manafort would have had this meeting where they were going to get all this dirt, allegedly, on Hillary Clinton for him to use against her, and they wouldn't have told him about it? That's, that sounds credible to you? Uh, well, it, I think, could he have known after the fact? I think that's possible. But I think what Donald uh, uh, Trump Jr. said last year, that the meeting was about 20 minutes. They thought they were going in for, for one thing. It turned out to be a completely other thing. And then they shortly dismissed the meeting. And so, so yes, I do think it's possible. And I think that if you check sources inside the White House and you check sources inside that campaign, the level of freneticism, it is very possible. Also, you have to remember, the president is an entrepreneur, and so one of the things that entrepreneurs do very well is they delegate uh, to other people, and they create a lot of autonomy around them. And so uh, one of the reasons why that campaign was so successful, you know, is that the president said, okay, you know, Paul has a job, Jared has a job, uh, everybody was in different positions, and he's a guy that would delegate to people the way good entrepreneurs do. So, mm. yes, I do think that that's possible. I understand the pushback, why people think it is impossible. Uh, but you have to understand, it was one meeting, and Donald J. Trump Jr. said it was a meeting that was 20 minutes long. Right. And so when you think about the totality of what was going on in the campaign, we're looking at it now with a microscope and the way we uh, magnify and destroy yeah. ants. But back then, it wasn't that big of a deal. And so I, I take them at their word on okay. that as well. Anthony, uh, you were the White House Communications Director for a few days, and, and I know you wanted to improve relationships between the press and the White House. So I do want to ask you about this, because this week the White House uh, barred Caitlin Collins, a CNN reporter, an excellent reporter of ours, from attending uh, an event, uh, even though she was the pool for TV, after she asked, quote, inappropriate questions during the president's pool spray when he was meeting with the head of the European Commission. Of course, her questions were entirely legitimate. As somebody who wanted to improve relations between the White House and the press, what do you think? What's your take? Are you okay with the way the White House handled this? Well, well, what I would do, I actually think, you know, listen, I think probably that pro I mean, I don't know this for a fact, but that probably co came from the president. Uh, he likes to be respected. He was probably frustrated at that moment. Uh, but what, what I would do in a situation like that is I'd pull a tape of questions that Sam Donaldson screamed at uh, Ronald Reagan and go right through the last 30 years of poll reporters asking questions that presidents probably think are obnoxious or untoward or disrespectful questions and just point out uh, that she was doing her job. And so I understand that... Uh, you know, she was put in the penalty box. I would certainly recommend to my former colleagues there that you take her out of the penalty box because uh, I've said this consistently and I will continue to say this to anybody that listens. Having a war declaration or having that level of antagonism with the press does not help the president, does not serve his interest going into the midterms or the reelection. I understand the frustration. I understand the president's personality where mm -hmm. he likes to punch back and he likes to be uh, combative. Uh, but what I think that also does, and Jake, you'll probably agree with me on this, it galvanizes the press vis-a-vis -vis the White House. You know, I, w I was watching one of the press conferences where uh, I think it was a gentleman from Politico mm. yielded to uh, the woman from NBC. Right, yeah. And so what you're doing is you're starting to galvanize people against the White House, and it's a, it's a collective, which I think is not in the best interest of the president. So yeah. one... I don't like that decision. Number two, it probably came from the president himself. And so um, you sort of can't, you know, when, when you're getting told by the president to do A, B, and C, and you're sitting there saying, well, it may not be the best idea. I'm sure these people have strong enough personalities where they would tell him, look, it's not the best idea, but he probably wanted them to do it yeah. anyway. Um, and, but, I, but I disagree with it, and I'm happy to, to talk about it. I'm happy to explain why. I think the best people around yeah. the president uh, we'll always give him constructive uh, coaching. It's not criticism. Mm -hmm. It's just, look, this is not in your best interest. Long term, removing Caitlin from the pool or putting her in the penalty box, all, uh, you're, you're, you're not getting the desired outcome. What is the desired outcome? I guess that people don't ask you those questions. Well, guess what? The First Amendment gives these reporters the right to do that. 
Um, and by the way, your predecessors, many of which you respected, take a look at a tape. This yeah. is what all these reporters have been doing for 30 or 40 years. Anthony, so thanks. I so disagree with it. Thank you so much. I really appreciate your time. For the record, the reporter that yielded the floor was uh, from The Hill, but we appreciate it. Anthony Scaramucci, thank you so oh, from much. From The Hill. Okay, yeah, but you get How, the point on I me. get the point, absolutely.